the White House continues to face tough questions about its immigration policies, in particular about facilities in Texas being used to house migrant children. Megan Roberts is following the story for us this morning. So, Megan, what do we know about the tent city in question? Well, this particular city, Natasha, is in Tornillo, Texas. It houses young men 16 and 17 years old. Now, these young men are considered unaccompanied minors. So they came to the border crossing by themselves alone, and then they were apprehended by the United States government. They are being moved to this tent city that you can see images of there right on the on the on your screen right there they're being moved there to make room at other facilities for more children who have been separated younger children who have been separated from their parents at the border we've been getting a glimpse into some of those facilities throughout the week but this is the first time we've seen or heard of anything from this tent city that was constructed to try to make more room try to make more space for all of the migrant children in the United States right now and two United States politicians were among the first in there, Republican Will Hurd, Democrat Mary Gonzalez, both from Texas, and this is what they had to say about what they saw. This is not a Republican issue. This is not a Democrat issue. Uh, Mary's a Democrat. I'm a, I'm a Republican. This is, a, this is an, a, an American issue. Where does it stop? It, this, this is not a long-term sustainable solution. Now, Hurd says conditions in the tents are good. The young men are treated well. Each tent houses 20 teens as well as two adults to supervise. There's showers, there's bathrooms, there's medical facilities, there's a cafeteria. Right now, that tent city has 400 beds, and they expect 360 of those to be in use shortly. But Hurd says it's his understanding that facility could house up to 4,000 people, which he calls, quote, absolutely nuts, Natasha. Megan, give us a sense of the context. How does it get to the point where there are tent cities popping up in the United States to house migrant children? Well, it goes back to the heart of this new zero tolerance policy by the Trump administration. They're calling for a crackdown on adults that are trying to cross into the United States illegally. And they are calling for those adults to be federally prosecuted, which causes them to lose custody of the children that came with them across the border. So we have this influx of sometimes very young children that are being separated unexpectedly from their parents. So now you have two groups of minors within the United States. You have the gentlemen we were just talking about the, the men we were just talking about who crossed the border alone and then you have these children that were separated from their parents everything is so full that they're creating these tent cities to try to make more room and just to put it into context over the span of six weeks in april and may 1995 children were separated from their parents we understand that number is growing so we're certainly going to keep an eye on all of the developments to this story to see what else may pop up to help house these children it's not just washington lawmakers challenging hardline tactics local politicians are also speaking out among them the mayor of houston he calls the policy morally bankrupt. Number one, I don't support the policy. I don't support the policy of stripping children away from their, away from their families. This is Father's Day weekend. It's all about celebrating family. I don't want in the city of Houston for us to be uh, participating in a policy that I think is morally bankrupt. This is not about party. It's not about Democrat, Republican, nothing about that. It's about valuing children. Mayor Turner is also urging the owner of that property to take a stand and make sure that the facility is not used to tear children away from their families. For a closer look at this migrant crackdown, we're joined now by Jeff Mason. He is the Reuters White House correspondent and he joins us from Washington. So Jeff, welcome to you. Let's talk about this week because the critical thing in the debate this week is getting that inside look inside some of those detention centers in front of some of those tent cities. How has the ability to see how people are living, particularly children, change the way the conversation is taking place around this issue? Well, it's certainly getting a lot of, of play, Natasha, and it's, it's getting a lot of attention here in Washington, in addition to around the country. You saw tension sort of explode in the, in the White House press room last week uh, as a result of this issue. And you will see the debate in the halls of Congress uh, really go at it this week as uh, Republican lawmakers are working on an immigration bill, uh, a couple immigration bills, in fact, one of which sort of addresses this problem, along with many of the issues that uh, President Trump has been wanting to address on immigration. So last Friday, uh, he 
he's created a little bit of controversy by saying in an interview with Fox and Friends that he would not sign the more moderate of two immigration bills that Republicans are working on. But then the White House concluded the day by saying, actually, he would. Uh, so the, the big question will be whether or not that bill uh, gets any traction this coming week. Uh, and uh, honestly, whether or not it does enough to address the problem that you're just talking about, which is these children uh, who have been separated from their parents. Now, we also heard from the president earlier in the week where he said he hates seeing these children separated from their parents. He's describing it as inhumane. And then he says he's actually just following the Democrats' orders, that it was, in fact, the Democratic Party and the previous administration that brought in these policies. What do you make of that? Well, that, that is not true. The, and in fact, it's the, the own Department of, of Homeland Security of, of President, from President Trump's administration that uh, has said recently that some 2,000 children have been separated from their parents just in the last six weeks. And that is as a result of the policy that Attorney General Jeff Sessions announced, which is a zero-tolerance policy for people who are crossing the border illegally. And that means everyone who does cross that border uh, has to be prosecuted under the zero tolerance policy. And when you're prosecuted as an adult, then your your children, if they are accompanying you across the border uh, illegally, are being separated from you. So, it, you know, President Trump likes to find diversions and he likes to blame either, in this case, the opposition party, often also the press. Uh, but it's it's just, it's factually inaccurate to say that this is a democratic policy. It is, in fact, uh, his administration's policy, and they could change it if they wanted to. Now, President Trump is scheduled to meet with House Republicans on Tuesday to discuss this very issue. Do you have a sense of what's going to be on that agenda, what that conversation is going to be like? Well, I think it's going to be about the broader immigration bill that we were talking about a little bit earlier and whether or not they have the votes uh, and the support to get that passed. Uh, Democrats have been critical of their efforts. Uh, because they don't, A, think it goes far enough to help these children that we've been talking about, uh, but also doesn't go far enough to help the so-called dreamers, uh, who were children or, or men and women brought by their parents to the United States as children uh, who have been living in this country ever since uh, and are looking for a way to become citizens without the threat of deportation. Uh, President Trump has been pushing since he was a candidate and now since he's been in the White House for an immigration solution that includes uh, a border wall uh, and some other more conservative policies on immigration. So he'll be no doubt talking about that and seeing whether they can get some traction. One of the interesting political pieces to this is that the Republicans are pushing for this solution now because there's probably a concern amongst their ranks that it could hurt them politically during the midterm elections in November. Jeff, we spoke with a former agent who had to carry out missions like this where you're separating these children who are crossing the border illegally and he described it as being inhumane and he said it was ineffective. Do you have any sense of whether in fact this zero tolerance policy is deterring people from crossing the border? Well, I don't have any figures in front of me. I know that the president since coming into office has been sort of proud to say that those crossings had come down. But as I recall, having seen figures not too long ago, uh, that dip in the in the crossings went up again this year. So without going back and checking those numbers myself, I don't I don't want to to say. But I do know that um, you know it's it's the intention of this administration to have an effect on those numbers. And in fact, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, when he announced the zero tolerance policy, which included this child separate separation issue, uh, made very clear that the point in that was to say, hey, look. Uh, if you're going to cross into the United States, this is what's going to happen.